Well, Joe, it's been a very interesting week, I think. Um, there have been two major news stories in terms of uh, Harvey Weinstein mm -hmm. and Civil Smith and the evidence that the independent inquiries heard. But what's, your, what's been your take on it? Well, I think, you know, what I found interesting was the similarities in mm -hmm. both uh, those particular people. And although they were decades apart, the same process seemed to be um, in use all the time and they continue, you know, stuff like um, they were both sexual predators for a start yes. and we recognise that. Mm -hmm. We can call it d different names. Um, I think Emma Thompson suggested that they coined the phrase she coined, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, so we'll, we'll hold on to that because I like that. Mm -hmm. But there were also things like they had both had positions of trust, um, they both had authority mm -hmm. and uh, power and power was a big part of their behaviour patterns and their abuse. And that came into play particularly, I think, about how they normalised their behaviour. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, the, the um, report about Cyril Smith, where he allegedly um, took some young person into the quiet room. Oh, yes, to check for nets. To check for nets. Yes. And then this child ended up um, completely naked yes. and, and fondled. And yes. likewise, there was another report where uh, some young lad disappeared off for the day instead of going to work and that was physical abuse as well as the sexual assault mm -hmm. on uh, the part of Cyril Smith. But if you look at that and, and sort of parallel that with uh, Weinstein, the same principles, mm -hmm. this normalisation and this idea that as a victim if you object you're the problem. Yes, there's something wrong with you. Absolutely, mm. you're not okay. Yes. Um, and why would you question what I'm doing? Yes, I think I think both of them. You're absolutely right. There was there was that um, abuse of power. Yes. Um, and, and seemingly good deeds, I would say, to, to create opportunities to yes. abuse. But then that 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 just underlying uh, bullying. Uh, I would call it, you yes. know, that you, you don't cross me, you don't question me. Mm -hmm. As you say, that the victims, that, that if they object, there is something wrong with you. Yes. And we heard, didn't we, that, that really chilling audio recorder Absolutely. Um, of, of Harvey uh, Weinstein saying to that, that woman, you know, don't fall out with me. Yes. You know, don't yeah. ruin our friendship. And that was like a veil, veiled threat, wasn't mm, it? Absolutely. And that's what, the other bit, of course, is how people um, wittingly and unwittingly mm. colluded with the perpetrators in this sort of hiding under, I suppose, that, again, the coined phrases, a veneer of respectability. Mm -hmm. And again, that's that use of power, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Where you don't question. Mm -hmm. And even if we go back to um, Jimmy Savile, mm -hmm. we again see this very similar mm -hmm. sort of traits. Uh, looking at the three of them, I think the things that stand out for me are between Savile, Smith, and uh, Weinstein, there's this, um, they were all charismatic. Yes. Uh, they were all influential. Yes. Um, they were very public figures. Yes. And of course, they were. They had this sense of entitlement, which was given either by their personality or indeed by their wealth. Yes, and I, and I think the, the you know the, the opportunities, the way that they created those opportunities, were very much wrapped up in that. That I'm just helping, you know, an actress uh, mm -hmm. prepare for an audition, or I'm just doing some fundraising work for this hospital. And, you know, I, I think it's really interesting that, that we saw that model, uh, aspects of that model, um, in the Panorama programme. Indeed. Um, earlier this week that was talking about the, the, the rise of, of, of child sexual abuse by other young people in skills. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what really surprised me about that programme was, was to, to, to hear, and I don't know if you recall, but it was based on a Freedom of Information request made by the Panorama team to the police forces um, in England yes, and Wales. Yes, got 38 out of 43 responses. Indeed, they them. did. Um, and it was covering a four-year period mm -hmm. from 2013 to 2017. And there was an increase of, of what we would call peer-on-peer -peer abuse of 71% during that time. And that, that strong sense of entitlement really came out. Yes. Uh, along with the fact that the victim was very much seen as a means to an end. Mm -hmm. Total lack of, of, of victim empathy. Um, and I think what astonished me about that, when you talk about um, the collusion, mm. um, was, was very much that in those cases, 74% that were reported to the police were no further action. That's a huge percentage, isn't it? It is. And a number of cases where um, 
cautions were given out or, or were received for rape. Yes, and what's surprising is of the numbers we're talking about in schools, there was um, 2,625 reported uh, cases, 225 of which were actual rapes, mm. but yet 74% resulted in no further no action. No further action, absolutely. And we also heard, didn't we, of, of the fact that quite often the victim was expected to continue going to school with the abuser, yes. um, and that quite often they were made the problem. So why don't you leave? You'd be more comfortable And that was suggested else. in some cases, wasn't it? Yes, it was, as, as explicitly as, as mm, that. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. You, you, one of the things I noticed was the victims very quickly became very isolated. Mm. Mm. Um, which compounded the problem and Absolutely. sent, to some extent, a message that they yeah. were the problem. I think that was the key thing for me watching that programme, is that the response of the services sent out a very clear message, and it was it was the wrong message, Yes, which was basically, this isn't really an important issue, yeah. um, it, it's not one we're going to take seriously, yeah. and actually no harm done. Mm. Um, and it goes back to that victim blame. Yes, um, and, they, and they're victimised a second time by, by a system. Yes. And by the adults around them who were meant to protect them. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I think education is a big thing. I do. And I also thought there was a complete lack of work around perpetrators. Yes. Um, you know, if you've got a young person who is behaving in a, a sexually harmful way, they are a young person, they're still developing. Um, if we don't do that work, we condemn them to be adult perpetrators, mm. where those opportunities to work with them are lost. So I, I felt very strongly that that was um, a, a missing element. One of the interesting things about young people who, who um, sexually harm is they're one of the very few groups that are both perpetrator and victim at the same time. Yes. So we have a duty of care to protect the victim, mm. but we also have a duty of care to the perpetrator, if they're a young person, yes. to ensure that they actually get some um, work and some intervention that will help them, if possible, to manage their behaviour and if nothing else to at least get some insight mm. into how damaging the behaviour is. But I think as well we need insight into why. What, yes. Why is this happening? I mean that's, that's for me the question that wasn't answered is yes there's been a 71% increase, why? Yes. And I think until we've got an understanding of, of what the reason is we can't really respond to mm. it as a country but I personally feel very concerned that at a time we've got, I think, record levels of awareness of child sexual abuse, we're actually seeing an increase rather than a, a, yes. a decrease in the incidence. Can I just ask a question? I'm just mm. curious, what you think might be the the cultural change that has allowed that phenomenal increase? For me, it's got to be the internet. Okay. Um, I, I think there there are, in terms of perpetrators, there is being able to access. Abusive material on the internet normalises it. Yes. And if you look at Finkelhaar's model of sexual abuse, mm -hmm. it allows them to overcome internal inhibitors, yes. but also in talking to like minded people, there is that normalisation which feeds into that cycle yes. of abuse. I also think lots of young people are watching um, these kind of things online and thinking that that is normal. Yes, that, that, that sort of comes right back to like. what I was saying about this idea of, of mm. our culture in terms of the use of the internet by young people. Yes, absolutely. I think I think for me it's certainly about raising those that awareness, having those dialogues with young people so they're clear on what's acceptable behaviour, yes. um, issues of consent. I think what really shocked me in the Panorama programme was the response that was given to those young people by their school friends that often they then became the victim of bullying um, and were called grass, slag, whore. Um, so, so they were actually then the object of bullying by people who should have supported them as yes. their peers. Um, so I think there is that part about uh, the, the, the recognition, the dialogues, raising um, that awareness both in, in young people but also in staff. Mm. And I also think what came out of the Panorama programme was the complete lack of support for victims and the families. So, I mean, what, what what conclusions do we draw from that? What what do you think we've learned in terms of going forward from this week? Yeah, I think it has to be educated across the board, education across the board, doesn't it? Yes. Um, regardless of gender, and that we ensure that we have everybody singing from almost the same sheet, really, at some point. Mm. Um, but I do think we need to address the whole issue of the internet, its use, mm. and how we then educate people to use that correctly and more importantly safely. Yes, absolutely. 
and, and just raising the expectations of young people, raising their understanding of, of, of what is a healthy relationship, what is acceptable uh, conduct, when it's okay to say no. Um, and, and I think getting rid of that sense of, of, of entitlement, getting rid of that sense of expectation that it's okay mm. to abuse somebody for your own gratification. Well, that, yeah, that feeds into the whole issue of consent, doesn't it? Yes, it does, and very much so. Ultimately, the, one of the basic bedrocks of, yeah. of healthy relationships, if you understand yeah. consent, and you can build on that. I think it's really important to include boys and young men in those dialogues Absolutely. as well, because we know that um, boys and young men often feel inhibited in coming forward. Yes. Um, about the abuse that they've experienced, mm -hmm. that those perceptions of masculinity often make them feel that they should have prevented it happening yes. or they should have been able to deal with it in a different way. Um, and I, I think we need to just clear, set a clear expectation that irrespective of gender, sexual abuse is wrong. Absolutely. And it's not something that any young person should have to deal with unaided. True. And uh, w w without a doubt, I think the um, there's some difficult questions to be had, yeah. there's some difficult conversations to be had and uh, th there's a lot of hard work ahead of us but um, mm. it's absolutely absolutely essential that that's done. So the good thing is this is sort of for you and I the first of hopefully many of these interesting conversations. Absolutely and that is a really good point because um, if you have enjoyed watching this uh, in conversation with, it is the first of many. We're going to be looking at best practice across a range of issues for a range of different services. Um, so if you've enjoyed listening to us today, please like us, follow us, share it with your colleagues and uh, we look forward to seeing you very soon. Thank See you. you again in the near future. Bye. Bye, -bye.